and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser and mostly I'll be a low rent Axel Rose and this is my husband Joe. Hello. Hello. Um, that only makes sense if you're watching the video recording. Because uh, you look like a low rent Axel Rose. I do a little bit. I need a banjo. Mm, what? Mm, maybe. Yeah, I've got a really nice headband which is really nice but then I think I've made a sartorial error with the t-shirt mm. which is stripy. Basically look like I've got dressed in the dark today. It's not a great look. It's very lovely. Oh, thanks. You never say nice things to me on the podcast. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we are um, not drinking anything because Joe it's... didn't complete his preparations for the podcast while I was... It's terribly poor prepared. It's it's like one o'clock on a Monday. I have I have water. I have I'm fine. nothing, nothing. I have just had a coffee though that has made me feel a little bit, you know, you know, like when coffee mm. goes a bit too far and yeah. you don't just feel like a little bit perky, you just feel a bit squishy, and a, bit a, bit, like, a bit like you might um, yeah. just want to sit down and do nothing. Yes. Um, yes. We're, we're also, although we don't sound it, quite excited because there are builders um, working on our house. Knocking big holes in the house, doing things. Well, we knocked big holes in. We knocked big holes in. They're, they're uh, weatherboarding the side of the house and then they're putting in sole plates and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, making the house stronger. It's going to be good. Um, yeah, it's all good. Um, so I have a question. Um, why, can't, why, why can't men just pee in the toilet? Why do they have to pee all around the toilet? Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Right, what are we reading this week? Joe? what are you reading this week? I'm... Yeah. Um, I am technically not reading anything at all because I have just finished uh, a book and I'm now like, what comes next? Wow. And there's about, there's a stack of about 900 books. Because what, what happens is Vicky reads books about three times faster than I do. And then every book she reads, she says, oh, you should read this. And then I go... Well, yeah, but since you last said that, I've read like a quarter of a book and you, and, and then she says it again and again and again until I've got this massive stack of books that I, I haven't read. Okay, well, what have you just finished reading? I've just finished reading um, uh, Heinlein, 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 um, Starship Troopers, which is a proper book, not just a silly film. See, I did not know that. Was it good? Yeah, it was all right. Should I read it? Well, I like it. Yeah, it was quite, quite philosophical. Okay. In a kind of jar heady kind of way. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, um, cool, cool, cool. I am reading... No, 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 no. <laughs> I am reading The Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler, which is the sequel to the one that Joe read a couple of weeks ago, that mm -hmm. I've also read. It's very good. And I'm really loving it. Um, this one is written in the form of diary entries, um, and it's her daughter. It's the main protagonist from the first book daughter reading her mother's and father's diary entries and also putting her own okay so so it but it's great um it's about a dystopian future that i was reading last night and i was like i'm gonna have to stop reading this for a bit because it was just freaking me out because it was just frighteningly close to what's going on in the states at the moment um like really alarmingly close yeah what happens if the dystopian future of a couple of years ago actually becomes what we're living in I know. Instead of some, you know, story to frighten people with, but the, yeah, it becomes real. Well, the thing is, and this is what this is what does frighten me a little bit because the tactics employed in the Parable of the Talents by the bloke who's become president, and he's like a fundamentalist Christian scary dude, is just making enemies of literally everybody who doesn't agree with his way of doing things mm -hmm. and whipping up hatred, and you can see. Trump doing that. You can see the Conservatives doing that in this country. That is exactly what they are doing in this country right now. Um, and it's just terrifying to watch people lapping it up. Mm. There's a certain section of people who are just lapping that shit up. And I find it terrifying because it's just this evil rhetoric put out and lies put out by, by the media, the right wing media, and just these just people who aren't willing to think for themselves or aren't able to think for themselves that listen to this stuff that's put out and that's how they divide us that's how they divide us and it's really frightening is the, is the right wing in this country doing that i can that's what i see okay. yeah um well all of the stuff that we've had recently about um refugees and boats it's like you know on the one hand you've got them talking about that dickhead who drove up to 
what's its castle with his family. And it's like, oh, he's just doing his best for his family. But when it's people coming from war-torn countries to this country on a tiny boat that they might die in the channel, it's like, not like that. Hmm. Don't do it like that. That's not what we mean. Because you're brown and we don't like you. And it just gives me the absolute fucking rage. So yes, that is what I see. And it's that's kind of what they're talking about in the book that I'm reading at the moment. And it's just the same. It's just that they're a, f- a, few, more, a few more miles down the road hmm. than we seem to be at the moment. So I don't, I don't know what to do about it. It's scary. So yeah, so that's my non-fiction, except it feels... Fri- that's my fiction, sorry, but it feels frighteningly non-fiction-y. <laughs> Um, and my non-fiction that I'm reading is Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri, which I mentioned last week, but mm-hmm. I haven't started reading it. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, again, kind of horrifying that people treat other people the way, <laughs> just the way they do. Um, but also really fascinating as well, because I'm learning all sorts about the history of hair. And not just black hair, but like hairstyles around the world. And you think about hairstyling as a, a language almost all of its own and it's a status status symbol and status identifies it. It's just really, really, really interesting. Um, So I thoroughly recommend that book, which we're reading in Bookaholics Anonymous at the moment. Nice. Um, And yeah, so what have we been up to in the dingle the last week? Well, we, what did we do? A fortnight ago, we smashed all of the panels out the front of the house. Yep. With the intention that the sole plate was going to be fixed last week and we were going to spend the weekend just gone putting panels back into the house. Yes. But the sole plate didn't happen. So we painted the office instead. Yeah, we've, um, well, the inside was already painted, painted the outside of the office, mm-hmm. which has been bugging me for ages because we'd kind of done one wall, that wall there on the outside, we'd done two coats on, and then we'd, I'd kind of done two thirds of the front of it in blue, and then we just abandoned it, and it's been bugging me for months. And we couldn't get the shade of blue and change to yellow, and it's just, oh. uh, it's No, it's Cornish cream. Yellow. It's Cornish cream. It's a very nice colour, I like it. And now we've done the whole thing, is one coated, and it's like, oh, I feel better now, so I'll probably sit like that for another year and then we'll do another coat. Um, also, we took the tiny sheeps up to their paddock. We did. And they were so well behaved. They were they, so good. They do like a little walk through the village. They do like a little walk through, through the village, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, we're now seven and a half minutes in. We've done um, nothing. Well, we have. I've, social commentary, social important commentary. things. Okay. When you watch the news, think about what you're reading and how it's being presented to you, please. And then think for yourself, make your own mind up. Um, okay, so this week we are talking about writing about yourself, which everybody hates doing. Mm-hmm. And this was riffing off a question that I got from one of Team Moxie in one of our power hours. Mm-hmm. Moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour, if you would like to join us, because it's really great. Um, and she had asked, how do we write about ourselves? You know, I, she finds it really difficult to do it. How do we do it? Okay. Um, if we're talking about um, about pages and stuff like that. So I'm thinking about the about page on your website specifically and the author page in your book. Um, and I'll start with the author page in your book. But first of all, why do you want to do this? Why would you want to talk about yourself? Um, basically, because people are nosy. We want to know about the people that we're learning from or buying from. If you are buying from a company that isn't just a commodity, it's like, I don't really give a shit about the people behind who's selling me diesel, frankly. Although that's not entirely true. I kind of do, but I have to buy diesel, so it's like, I don't really have much choice. That was a bad example. Byros, you know, I'm just, actually, I don't buy Byros either. This is, let's just move on. Right. (laughs) Commodity stuff. Printer paper. Printer, well, no, because even then I want eco-friendly printer paper. But then mm. I don't really care about the people behind it. That sounds awful. I care about people, but I'm not that fussed. So maybe what you're discovering via trying to find something you don't care about the people... Is I care about everything. Is that you do care about but people. But with the print paper, I care that it's eco-friendly or recycled or whatever, but I'm not going to go to the about page of their website, probably. But if they say, you know, we like chopping down rainforests and we do this and we do that, then you're going to be like, well, I'm not buying your paper. But exactly. if they say, you know, we sustainably and we farm and we plant twice as many trees as we harvest and, yeah. you know, then you'd be like, okay, maybe I'll buy your paper. So I think what I've done is argue myself out of my point that not all of, it doesn't always matter. It's like, it does always matter. I think it does always matter. It does always matter. And just because we're nosy and particularly for the kind of businesses that most of the people listening to this are going to be selling, like we're going to be selling courses and one-to-one services and things like that. Yeah, you want to know who you're working with. Even more important to know who I'm working with. Yeah. So that's, that's why. The other reasons, this is for the about page on your website. Um, it's actually the number two most visited page, stat-wise. Really? Yeah. 
Um, and so I've got a few more stats for you as well. So when asked, when you get to a vendor website, which section of the site do you look at first? Just over 47% said products and services, 33% said homepage, and 16% said about company info. So that's like 16% of people who the very first page they'll go to is the about page. Effectively, who are you? Exactly. Um, and that source there, by the way, is co-marketing, KO marketing. Um, another stat for you, when asked once you're on the homepage, what information do you want to see available? 86% of people said products and services, 64% want contact information, and 52% want about information or company info. So that's once they've got to the homepage, that's what they're, they're going to be looking for. And again, that's co-marketing. And then a study from Aweber showed that Aweber are... Um, email marketing company. A study from Aweber showed that a company called Quality Stocks increased its email subscriber list growth by 158% just by adding an opt-in form to their about page. So that's like a massive increase in list, in list building um, just from adding an opt-in form to your about page. So it's, a, it's an important page. 160% more subscribers by adding an opt-in form on their about page. And that makes sense because if you've got a great about page and somebody's reading it, they're like, oh, I really like the sound of this person. And then you've got an opt-in form to hear more from them. Just go, yep. Yeah, absolutely. I want to hear more from that person. So if you do nothing else from listening to this podcast, make sure you've got an opt-in form on your about page. Um, But we do find it extremely difficult to write this stuff. And there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, it's instilled in us from birth, um, and especially for girls, that we shouldn't brag. Mm Mm-hmm. We should be humble, we should not toot our own horn, and this is all bullshit, right? We're not talking about being braggy and obnoxious, we're talking about just, you know, things that people might find interesting about ourselves and our accomplishments and, yeah, communicating and stuff like that. And we're also worried about what people think, well, are they going to like us, are they not going to like us? Um, which is a very human way to be. Uh, we don't know what to say, you know, what's, what's relevant and important, what, what should I include in my about page, um, and what's too, too much information, nobody wants to air their dirty laundry in public. Mm-hmm. Um, and also we tend to think we're boring because our own lives are everyday to us and so we can't imagine that other people will find us interesting. Sure. Um, so all of those, there's, there's a bunch of reasons, there's probably many more reasons why we find it difficult to write about ourselves, that's just a few of the most common ones. So in today's podcast, finally, <laughs> 12 and a half minutes in, um, we're, we're going to give you a few pointers about your about info, and this is good for books and websites. So starting with books, um, a lot of books have only a very short blurb for the about the author, it's like a shortish paragraph. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a bit of a shame. Honestly, I, I'm always a little bit disappointed when I'm reading a book and it's only got like a short paragraph and it's almost like a very abbreviated version of someone's CV, you know, where they're sure. studying, where they're working, that, what they've done before. Um, and a good example um, is Emma Dabiri's book, Don't Touch My Hair, because I love it. And I like, I want, and okay, so the book that I'm reading that she's written is very much about her life and experiences. And so she's already given us a lot of herself, but then I'm also interested in what else she's interested in. Mm-hmm. outside of this, outside of her, um, outside of her race studies and her diversity and inclusion work, I'm also interested in her as a, a person, what else she does, because that's not all she is. Yeah. Um, and so it would have been really nice if I had had, you know, a bit more there. Um, I mean, she might be very private, in which case it's, it's none of my business. And that might, that might be a decision that she's made. But if I've really enjoyed a book, I want to know more about the author. Um, I probably go into way too much detail in my books about page, but I'm kind of comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the key. You have to be comfortable with it. So given everything I've just said about wanting to know more about the people whose books I really enjoy, I would never say share stuff you're uncomfortable sharing, for yeah, sure. You've got, you've got to be, you're, you're sharing things that you are comfortable with absolutely anybody knowing. Yes. I totally <laughs> thought you were going to say more than that. <laughs> so I took that opportunity to have a drink. <laughs> That was really good radio. Um, <laughs> so yeah, ultimately it's up to you to d- decide how much you include in your book, in your about page. Um, be comfortable with it, but I, I do think it's a good idea to allow people to go elsewhere and find out more about you, which is why I'm one of the reasons why I'm so keen on having an opt-in in in your book so that people can get more from you. Mm-hmm. Okay, as for websites, here are a few pointers. First things first, call your about page about. Don't try and be clever and call it something else. Um, it just confuses people. I've done that with previous websites. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to call it an about page because I want it to be like different. But people are looking for an about page. They're looking for about us or about me. And if they, they're not going to find your about page if you call it something silly or clever. So give them what they're what, looking what for. What did you call it? I honestly can't remember. 
<laughs> which says quite a lot about, <laughs> you know, my choice. Um, second thing is to think about why people visit your about page. They're not just looking for more information, they're seeking a, deep, a deeper connection with the person or the people behind the business. Um, so they know what you do and now they're going to want to know why you do what you do and, you know, what your motivations are. And also a bit, bit about the person that you are and the values that you hold. So from a website, do you think um, the About Me is kind of one of the... Do, do people go looking for more information about the person or the company uh, after they've looked at products and, and decided it's relevant and all that kind of stuff? Or do they, you know, what comes first, the, the, the producty stuff or the people stuff? Well, we just had a bit of that with the stats. I think most of the time people will go and look for products first mm -hmm. and then, you know, once they've found them, they'll go and um, they'll then go and look for more information. Um, other times it might be that you've just heard of a company and you haven't really bought anything yet. Like, oh, who's, what's this? What's all, what's all this about? So you might want to go straight to the about page, especially if it's somebody who's vaguely famous in their industry you might go straight to the about page okay. and have a look at them. I can give you an example. Um, Lucy and Yak is basically my favorite clothing manufacturer at the moment. Um, and I bought a pair of dungarees from them because my friend Jodes, hi Jodes, hi Jodes. Um, had a pair and I was like, oh, these are lovely. And now I buy loads of clothes from them. But as soon as I bought my first pair of dungarees and loved them, I was like, oh, I want to find out a bit more about these people. And that's when I found out all about their sustainability and their amazing factory that they've got in India and how they work with people in India to make sure that everything is fair and all the rest of it is all ethically sourced. So it's a really good company. They do good things. Um, and so that I got interested in that after I loved their clothing. Right. Um, but other times, you might go to the About page first. Yeah. So, okay. Um, second thing to think about is Think about why, um, so here, are, I've already said that, here are a handful of reasons that I might visit your about page, dear listener. <laughs> I want to find out what type of person you are and whether or not we would get on with each other. So um, basically, do I want my money going into your pocket? Right. And I saw on Facebook actually earlier today, somebody um, calls it the two beers and a puppy test. Would I have two beers with this person or would I leave my puppy in their care for, sure. a, for a weekend? And that's that's a pretty good test. I mean, I, I don't drink but you know would I have a cup of tea with this person it's it's definitely it's, it's one of those things that I definitely take into account when uh, I'm interviewing people because in my industry you know I just spent a week uh, working one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a dude and the week prior to that it was a different dude but we had to have dinner together we were in hotels we yeah. were working all day you know having a beer in the evening and eating, eating food and you really don't want that person to be a bit unpleasant you don't want to spend your week with that person if he's not don't want to work with a raging racist for don't example. want to work with a raging racist don't want to work with somebody who's totally obnoxious or you know it's just offensive so yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't want to give my company's money yeah to them i wouldn't want to employ them yeah and nor should you wouldn't want to buy things off them yeah uh, so yeah a bit of a recruitment tip there as well so yeah, another reason why I might want to visit your about page, maybe I'm not entirely sure what you do, but I'm intrigued enough to want to find out. So I might have kind of heard of you, I might have seen you around a bit, and it's like, oh, what does this person do? They look quite mm -hmm. interesting. Um, another reason, um, I might want to find out how long you've been doing this, doing whatever it is that you do, and whether or not you're a real professional, or, you know, are you honest about your experience and credentials? That's, that's a good reason to go visit people too. In some industries, that's more important than others. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you're kind of famous and I want to find out if all the hype is justified. I might want to go and find out more about you for that reason. So like you might want to go and I've never been to Gary Vaynerchuk's about page. <laughs> Maybe I will now. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think he worries about bigging himself up or, you know, I don't, I don't think he's the kind of person who would struggle to, to write about himself. I don't either. No. And you know, good for him. <laughs> um, nice one, Gary. Hi, he, Gary. He's, he's, He's not somebody that I'm probably ever going to buy from because I'm not his target audience and that's fine. Um, but I kind of still fascinated by him. Um, so yeah, here's a few reasons why I won't visit your about page. I'm probably not going to visit it if I'm just there to shop for a commodity. Although, having said that, I do want to know if the stuff that you sell is made in a sweatshop or an ethical factory or whatever. So, you know, I might go and have a look if I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make really sure that the cosmetics and toiletries I buy are vegan, not tested on animals and eco-friendly as well. So I will go and check out those credentials. Um, I always used to say, and this was me just parroting what I'd heard other influential copywriters say, that your about page isn't about you, it's about your customer. And that's not true. I was wrong. 
they're wrong. <laughs> your about page is very definitely about you, but it's about you as far as it relates to what your customer wants and what they want to know about you specifically and how you can help them. Mm. And that's really important, but it is totally about you. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind. Does anybody care about your mission? Because that's one of the things that's always trotted out on a company about page is like, our mission is to deliver really great envelopes. <laughs> it's like, is it though? Well, you know, I mean, there, there are missions that are important and interesting and would steer you towards using them. Um, exactly, that's why. Is, is your mission worth talking about? Absolutely. Okay. If you're, I mean, if you're just Continue. selling pens... <laughs> If you're just selling pens, then your mission might sound a bit contrived because well, it might do. Go on, go it on. might do. Yeah, make well, your I, I'm, I'm going. Um, who? Um, what's that company that sends us big boxes of loo rolls? Who gives a crap? Who gives a crap? Yeah, they're great. Amazing, right? They're, you know, step one, they send us loo rolls, so we don't have to go and buy them or carry them around. Yeah. Great, but their mission they, they spend toilets. their profits on digging toilets in in places where there aren't any toilets. But they are a really good example a of a commodity business that has decommoditized itself. Yeah. Like I am never going to buy any different any other toilet roll, even though I could. Even though it is a commodity technically, for me, buying toilet roll is no longer a commodity purchase because it's because I've got behind their mission. So that, but that's a really good mission. What yeah. I'm talking about is if you put um, on your web page that my mission is to, you know, my mission is to yeah. deliver. Make the, best, make the best widgets in town. I mean, I have actually seen people's mission written as, um, our mission is to aim to meet your expectations. And it's like, wow, that's depressing. <laughs> um, so, we hope to meet your expectations. Yeah, so don't do that. If you've got an amazing mission that really, you know, that really, it, it's basically been overused, the word mission has. Yes. It's been really overused. Like the word solutions and innovative have no place on anybody's website or marketing anywhere ever that's not quite true but mostly they shouldn't be used because they don't mean anything they don't mean anything they're too vague and they cease to mean anything okay so elvis and cressy are another good example they make um really expensive bags and luggage and things from decommissioned fire hose from the london fire service right and they give a, pro a proportion of their profits back to the firefighters charity okay. and that's really really cool and i've got one of their bags and it is a beautiful thing and i will never regret spending that money on it and it also comes with a lifetime guarantee. So their mission is really great. Um, Books That Matter Book Club, which I've just joined. I'm waiting for my first package. I'm very excited. Um, they've got a mission as well. It's not just a book club. They are um, they're sending books out, specifically uh, curated books that are written by and for and about women. Right then. I have no idea where we got to then. <laughs> okay. Um, we were talking about missions. We were talking about loo rolls and toilets. We were talking about... The Books That Matter Book Club. That's the Books That Matter to. Book Club. Yeah, written... So, for example, one of the books that featured was um, Beloved by Toni Morrison, which is a um, really well-known vintage classic. Um, Toni Morrison is a black female author and wrote social commentary, fiction novels, mm -hmm. and they're just books that matter, basically. They, they want to... Yeah, that's their mission, is to, I, could, I should probably have looked up their mission. I did not. And now I'm flustered. Um, so yes, missions. Okay, so yeah, does anyone, just think about, does anyone care about it? Is it yeah. actually a mission or is it just a thing that you do? Yeah, are you, are you just paying the mortgage? Or are you, yeah. you know, trying to achieve something with your, with your business? Yeah. So I have a, I have a mission. Um, I know other people have missions as well. Um, my mission is very important to me. It informs everything I do. Um, so yeah, if, if, if you have something, if you have a reason for doing things that informs everything you do, then for me, that's probably a mission and it's worth talking about. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise it's just, you know, paying the mortgage, which is fine and there's nothing wrong with that, but don't call it a mission because people will see through it. <laughs> um, another thing that I think puts people off writing their about pages or makes it difficult for people is, you don't have to have a rags to riches story. The entrepreneurial world abounds with stories of, you know, I had to gnaw off my own leg to, you know, to, to feed myself and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Um, that's fine. It's very, it's very inspirational um, and all the rest of it, but it's not incredibly relatable to most people. Thankfully, you know, thankfully, 
most of us are, are, are not in that position. Most of us have not gnawed off our leg. Yeah, and um, Ash Ambergé is a really good example of this. So I love Ash Ambergé. She's an amazing copywriter, and I've been a fan of hers for ages. I've been on her email list for ages. And her her story is, is really it is really inspirational. It's really interesting. Um, you know, she was um, lost both of her parents fairly young and ended up literally ended up living in a car with her last twenty dollars. I was like, oh, I need to do something about this. And it is a really inspirational story, but I can't relate to that really on that kind of level because thankfully I've never been in that position. Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm kind of mentioning it is because after I read that story, and she's a very good writer as well, obviously, um, I was like, oh, well, there's no point in me telling my story because I haven't got that kind of, yeah. I just haven't got that kind of inspirational story. And that's okay. I don't, you know, for a long time, I thought I had nothing interesting to say. Mm -hmm. But I do. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to have a super dramatic life and death. Yes. Saved from a volcano at birth, you know, that kind of. Yeah. If you do, that's great. Tell it. Absolutely tell it. But don't feel like you have to. Because you don't. Um, You want to tell your story truthfully because people will relate to it. You know, there are going to be people, plenty of people, well, I don't know, hopefully not too many people that really relate, like, specifically to Ash Ambergé's story as well, um, the people who really genuinely have been in dire straits, poverty, you know, that, that kind of situation, um, they will relate to that story and other people will find it inspirational. Hmm. But you don't have to have something like that. You can tell your story and if it's a fairly, if you think, you know, it's a fairly everyday story, I've thankfully never been in that position, so have a lot of the people that I work with and that's okay. So that they're going to relate to my story, which is, you know, not quite as, not quite as dramatic, but still important yeah um okay so another thing to think about is fun facts do you include fun facts on your about page maybe are you fun <laughs> if, if you're fun include some fun facts about do yourself you have some facts yeah if you are a funeral director maybe it's not appropriate to include fun facts but people are still going to want to know who you are and why you got into you know if i if i meet if, I, I know somebody who's an undertaker mm-hmm. um a girl who goes to a woman who goes to the pole studio Which is unusual because there aren't that many, or there never used to be that many female undertakers. And so I would be super interested in her story. Why did she get into that? How did she get into that? Hmm. You know, it's it's, it's not the kind of thing that will attract most people. So it takes a special kind of person, I think. So yeah, that kind of story goes really well. Maybe not fun facts, though. Yeah. Not not, not really the, the, the kind of vibe they're looking for. No, although having said that, I have life insurance from a company called Dead Happy. And they're freaking brilliant. They're hilarious because, you know, everybody dies. <laughs> and why not make a bit of light out of... They're, they're certainly not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But they really appealed to me. But it worked for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, talk about fun facts about yourself. Because you never know where it will lead. So I ended up with um, a client in my membership group for many years. And she joined purely because of where we live. <laughs> Uh, because we talked about our village and the house that we're doing up and all the rest of it. Um, and we live in the same village that her uncle used to live in when she was a little girl. And so she she came here as a, as a tiny child. Right. And that was what was like, oh, wait, what? And that so was the hook. That was the hook. Yeah. So you never know what's going to hook people in. Okay. So I'm just going to leave you with three questions to keep in mind when you are thinking about writing your about page or you're about the author page for your book. Mm-hmm. Question the first. What do people want to know about you? I thought Joe was going to dive in with some um, <laughs> exposition there. Not really. I oh, mean, okay, I, I cool. guess that, I guess they, yes. Mm. Mm. Are they going to, think about what industry you're in. Are they going to want to know about your credentials? Are they going to want to know how you're into it? Are they going to know, want to know why you do what you do? Are they going to know, are they going to want to know what type of people you work with? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So what do they want to, what are they going to love to know about you? Question the second. What secrets do people love to discover about you? Yeah. And you will know this from people's reactions when they find out something new about you. Yeah. So, Top tip, don't make it a real secret. Yeah. Not a secret, really. It's just things that people find interesting about you when they find them. Yeah. So, like, if you've got a lot of bodies buried under the patio, I mean, yeah, tell someone because then you can be put away where you belong. But you, you know what I mean. It's like dirty laundry. But not if you don't thing. want to be. Well, I feel like we've gone down a bit of a weird road now. Yeah, that's yeah. quite strange, isn't it? Um, so yeah, what's what secret? You know, I don't need to know, and I don't want to know that you collect and eat your toenail clippings. That's probably something you shouldn't tell people unless you are selling a very specific fetish product. 
for example. Even mm. even that's probably got a place <laughs> to talk about it. Um, when I say secrets, secrets, um, people love to discover about me that I am a trapeze artist in my spare time. Mm-hmm. They love it. And so that's, that's the thing. They love to discover that I've got three tiny sheep. So that's the kind of thing that I talk about on my about pages. Nice. Yeah. Um, and see, uh, the question the third. Um, what are people relieved that you understand about them? Yeah, this is, this is a good thing. So if you could talk about some of your journey and why you do what you do, um, they, people are going to relate to that and be like, oh, God, she gets it. So yeah. for me, that's like... A lot of people will say to me, oh, it's easy for you. You're a writer. It comes easily. I was like, that's so not true. <laughs> it's so not true. It's just that I've been doing it for a long time and I'm, prof- I'm a professional and I make myself sit down and do the damn work. Um, but I really struggle with it. Yeah. Like there are days when I will do literally anything rather than start writing. This is true. Today has actually been one of those days to a certain extent. Although I think part of that is just because we're going on holiday next week. I'm really excited. You can't spend all week thinking about going on holiday no, next week. I know. Um, but yeah, people are really relieved to, um, under- to, to discover that I understand what they call writer's block, which is a, a myth, as you all know, if mm-hmm. you have listened to this. But yeah, I get it. I, I totally get that feeling of, oh, I will do anything rather than sit down and write. They, will, they, they are relieved to find that I too struggle to, you know, clear my schedule sometimes. So like people are like, oh, you're so organised. And it's like, well, sometimes I am, sometimes, but sometimes I, it's, my life is a total sometimes shit Sometimes you are one hour late to everything. Yeah, and it's, it's really bad. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Not one hour late. Um, but yeah, people, what, what are people relieved that you understand about them? That's a really important one. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. That's that. That's the that's the podcast. It's done. We're done. We're done. Yeah. What's Out. the takeaway, Joe? Um, you're more interesting than you think. Yeah, you are. And people are more interested than you think they will be. Yes. Remember, people are interested in people. People are interested in people, and in a world where, you know, if if you do sell paper clips or change tires or do something really uh, that is quite commoditized, sell loo paper, you know. Mm. Whatever it is that you do, uh, you can differentiate yourself from all of the other people who do that yeah. um, by telling your story. Yes, absolutely. How many other toilet roll companies tell their story or tell it well? Like, none. Although since Who Gives a Crap popped up, there are some that are doing a better job of it, yes. So, yeah. Okay, I hope you found that useful and illuminating. And I hope that you... Um, yeah, if you do nothing else from listening to this podcast, put an opt-in form on your about page mm. and capture people's email addresses. Right, we have a review, Joe. We have a review. We have a review from Kyle Heath, and he left this um, way back in 2017. Why is it? Yeah, he gave us five stars, and he said, listen because kittens. What listen did he say? Listen because kittens. No, I have not lost my marbles. That title is an example of what Vicky teaches. Psychology mixed with real-world business actions that will make you more successful. You can measure success any way you like. Money, time, holidays, there are no rules. Vicky knows this and you will learn more than you thought. Have you got 33 minutes today? You have. No excuses. I dare you to listen and tell me that this is not awesome. Oh, thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Um, yeah, we no dare mention, you no, to listen. No mention of me, though. No mention of you. Well, Joe, that was, everybody loves you. You're the real star. Kyle doesn't. <laughs> he, he asks about you. Does he? Yeah. Mm. Um, anyway, coming up next week, um, we have got, well, not we, actually, I interviewed Camilla Aguero. Hi, Camilla. Hi, Camilla. Um, and we talked all about writing books and courage and the courage it takes to write a book. Nice. So, yeah, that's a, re- that's a good episode. Um, I really enjoyed interviewing Camilla. And... We will, yeah, and Joe and I will be back the week after that and we'll be talking about something. We will. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> you can join Team Moxie for daily live writing sessions at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour. Uh, we are growing, it is exciting. We've just started a writer's review circle. You're getting things done. You're getting things done. If you find yourself thinking, you know, you're procrastinating you're not doing the things that you need to do you've got a list of things that you know you should do but there's always something more urgent power hour <laughs> that was almost like we rehearsed that that was a bit weird <laughs> 
Um, yeah, also, if you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and I will send you something silly in the post. If you like this podcast, go to iTunes and subscribe. It helps us climb the rankings or, you know, go to wherever you get your podcast from and subscribe. And please leave us a review. We, Five will, stars. we will read it out. Um, we, you can leave us a bad review or read that out as well. It might mock you. Might mock you a bit. Um, if, if, yeah. Or share it. If you know somebody who will enjoy our nonsense, send them to moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast. Sweet. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here, Joe. No worries. We'll be back. Well, we'll be back in two weeks. I will be back next week. Excellent. Ta-ta. Bye.